Thanks for watching this clip from my new podcast, In Search of Soil. For more great clips and full episodes, check out the links in the description below. From where you sit, what's your view in terms of academia and science when it comes to no-till? I think there's, you know, peer reviewed. A farmer is going to see what his neighbor's doing, how well it's working for him, and he's going to maybe make a decision based on that. And then some people are also going to be like, well, show me the science. It's one thing to say this is a good idea. It's one thing to suggest it. And hypothetically, it makes sense on paper. But is the science there? From your vantage point, when you think about no-till, where do you think the science is right now in terms of substantiating or failing to substantiate its benefits? Um, I guess there's kind of two sides to that. Um, in, in kind of reading in my experience with the science, there's plenty of experiments in science that's been done in the short term that may not show the greatest benefits of it. But when you start to look at studies that are longer term and involve not just till and no till, but kind of coupling that with other more holistic or regenerative management practices, that's when you begin to see the real benefits from it. So if you, if you go online and you find a, a research paper or an article or, or um, a magazine article, something that is just looking at a season or two of tilling versus no tilling with, without any other kind of coupled um, variables in there, there's, it's probably not going to look very good for the no-till side of things. But if you start to look at the, the more holistic picture of if you're starting with no-till and kind of the next steps of, of using cover crops and, and paying more attention to fertilizer use and things like that over a, you know, multiple seasons of time, that's when you're going to start to see the results showing more benefits from not just the no-till, but the no-till and the other practices that start to come along with it once you start to kind of get your toes wet in the regenerative practices, I think. And, and as far as, as farmers, you know, you've got your kind of peer pressure, or not peer pressure, but um, kind of peer review, like their neighbors and other farmers that they're seeing and, and the ability for them to access things online as well. Um, I've definitely noticed that it, it tends to be the younger farmers that I work with that are much more aware of resources available to them online. Um, and then there's, there's some of the older guys that we work with that, that literally a reason that, that a couple guys would not cover crop a field that we were kind of suggesting that they, they ought to is because it was right next to, the, a church. I don't know if it's a church they went to or not, but the people or the congregation at this church would have kind of been, I don't, I don't want to say judgmental, but would have noticed that their field wasn't fallow in the winter and kind of, it would have kind of got people talking about them and they just didn't want to have that happen or have people kind of judge the way that they're doing things or see that they're maybe doing things differently. So they didn't, they didn't shift Maybe they have now, this is a few years ago, but they didn't shift that field into cover crop use because of, of a kind of peer pressure issue. Hi everybody, thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also be sure to check out some of the great clips and watch the full interviews right here on In Search of Soil.